All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get rolling. I par partly really, <laughs> I got, uh, I was not necessarily concerned, but I was, I was intrigued by a conversation the other day from really our masterminds group. And uh, it, it really revolved around making real estate systems better. Now, real estate systems, what does that mean? It really just means what are the things, what are the tools that you can utilize, you can provide to yourself to go to work for you when you're not necessarily able to work 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And essentially it's what are the, what are the gaps and the holes in your business and how can you fill them with tools, most of which are already provided by the company that can go to work for you that can help you continue to move along and do the exact same, the, the, the exact things that you need to do, whether that's spend time with your family, be face to face in front of clients, whatever that might actually be. That's where tools come in. That's where systems come in. I mean, that's, that is 100% the reason why we've spent so much time on putting all of these systems in place and providing all these tools to the agents to go out and be able to utilize. Now, all of that starts with number one. The first one is the CRM. And yes, I know that that is a daunting task for most. It's a cumbersome thing that really doesn't get the value that it deserves. But point blank period, the thing is, is that while joiner base in itself is not perfect it is provided and it needs to be utilized you need to live in it i don't care if it's a, i don't care if it's an excel spreadsheet that you have that's great what does the what type of notifications does that excel spreadsheet give to you to help you know that today is the day to follow up with jenny or jimmy or Johnny, or whomever. That CRM that we provide, while it may not be perfect and it might not be beautiful to some, and it may be very intricate, it is. It has a lot of layers, but it's also got a lot of functionality that can help you utilize another piece that's automated to help you move your business forward. What I'm doing as a result of that is Jennifer is obviously doing DTR training. What I'm doing is offering joiner base training, whether it's one on one, whether it's small groups. It, I don't care if you want to put in two people. I don't care if you want to put in 10 people one-on-one -on -one learning how the system actually works and how you can make it work for you. I can tell you to go to the job aids all day long. I can say, use the CRM. I can say, use this, use this all day long, but without the actual hands-on learning, it's for naught. So as a result of that, what we're gonna be doing is one-on-one -on -one trainings and you guys already all have access to my calendar, but what I would, beg you to do is to get in there and look and request time to go and do that. I am more than willing to be in there for those one-on-one -on -one joiner based trainings. Just the same exact way that Jennifer's taking time out of her day to do the DTR trainings one-on-one -on -one and follow-up meetings. That's what it takes because the answer to the question of what's the best CRM, well, it's the one that's already free from your company that you're not utilizing to the best of your ability. Uh, the next thing, obviously, email plan gets overridden because the CRM that we have and that we provide through Joiner Base utilizes the ability to keep in touch with your client base via automated emails. I mean, MailChimp is great. Constant contact is fine. I don't, I, I don't, I, I, I get that there are, there are different services out there that could, but 
what we have is provided by the company and at your disposal, it's just using it that would ultimately benefit you. The next thing really for us to put into place for, from systems is lead generation. Now, we have the access to bring people back to the website via our digital marketing programs, via our AdWorks, our social media platforms, lead generation, it needs to be intentional. It's not just put a thing out there for the world, be it a blog post, an email, a text message, a, an ad, whatever it might be, a billboard. I can go put a billboard on I-26 and it be the most traveled intersection on I-26 in all of South Carolina. But if it's not looking at the audience that I want it to look at, then why am I even, why am I even doing that? So thinking about lead generation is another thing. How and where are we sourcing those? Are you paying for them? Uh, in, in which case I would, not beg is the wrong word, but I would strongly advise that you look at that platform that you're utilizing and really figure out how much that investment returns for you. The next one is conversion. So that's conversation strategies, right? That's how many conversations are you having a day? Again, number one, this is how this works. CRM is where everything starts. That is your book of business. Imagine yourself as a private practice doctor. This is all, these are all your patients. Seriously. We're not operating on anybody, but we are. In fact, the sum of these parts, our business is the sum of those parts. And if we say, I work by relationships, I work by referral, that's not good enough. And I'm just going to say that it's not good enough right now to just work by referral, because right now what we need to be doing is out there figuring out who are the people that need help. but we also have to keep track of the people that need help or the folks that don't know that they need help, but clearly do and are walking around out there with another person who just likes to wing it and work by referral. CRM flows into how do you touch them? The, the easiest way really right now is by email, but text messages are a massive impact for people. That lead generation funnels from two different ways. One, it's the people that you are, are in your sphere that you don't know it yet, that you haven't been reaching out to. Two, the people that you have been reaching out to but haven't been doing so on a consistent basis. And three, is taking the time to make sure that you are the king or queen of your neighborhood. That's a geographic area. That lead generation comes from the fact that if I were, if I were still there, selling my first goal and my goal before was i want to know every single person i want to know every single transaction that's going on in my neighborhood and until i got to that point it wasn't enough you got to keep on going and most of us live in neighborhoods where there are three four five hundred people at a minimum living in said neighborhood and then also, too, you got probably the same amount of number of people who also have a real estate license, but not every single one of them is you. Understanding that it doesn't matter if there are 50 other agents in the area that are also doing business, you need to start with right where you live and going out from there. That conversion, that's the second piece. Anybody having trouble with meetings? And wants to up their game in terms of converting conversations into physical opportunities to meet that's where we step in and if you want to that's where making my schedule available to you is paramount schedule some time with me i need to do x because if it's not on my schedule i can't always guarantee that we're going to be able to block out that time 
to be able to work on something intentionally. I want to do it intentionally. I don't want to hear about, ooh, something went wrong. Here's what, okay, well, here's what I would have done in retrospect, right? I would much rather be able to help on a proactive basis to say, hey, listen, some of these things might have gone wrong, but here's what we're going to do. I got this, you got this meeting coming up, and this is the way that I, if I were conducting the meeting, this is how I would approach it. Let's work on refining that skill set, skill building. The next thing is transaction coordination. Anything and everything in that transaction, uh, I would stress communication, communication, communication. And that communication starts top down with myself and with Jennifer, but then also too with the other side of the party. All communication is good communication when it relates to transactional issues. The only thing that kills real estate deals are time and surprises. There is nothing else that kills it. Mark my words. So transaction coordination. What we're looking at right now is how to utilize everything that is at your disposal already that you might not be noticing, which things fall through the cracks. We're very individualistic folks. So therefore we tend to try and take everything on ourselves and try and figure it all out. Let's leverage what we've got with in already. The next thing is organization. Now, I use Evernote and I, I just I just use Evernote just because it puts everything in the same place because if it's not all in the same place, I really can't figure out what the heck is going on at any given time. I'm just I'm just thinking in terms of if you're a notebook person, okay, then everything needs to be on that physical notebook. Everything needs to be there. That being said, it's a little bit harder to automate a written notebook. Um, there's a very, very, very good online service for all in one organization that you don't really have to use Evernote, especially if you're an Android person too. Uh, it's called Trello, trello.com. It is a very easy scheduling application, but I'm just gonna go ahead and say it's already been provided by the company and it's really not it's it's not a cost for service at all anyways is utilize your crm and link it with your google calendar the google suite product is already provided by the company and it's all right there you have access to everything that you could need in terms of a, a, a an individualized scheduling platform why not use that uh, and the secondary piece to that is follow-up. So what, to what it, any of your organizational applications or the website that you want to use or whatever it might be, if it's Google Suite, if that's fine. If it's your CRM dinging you, which if you're in there, it should have action plans associated with whomever it is entered into your CRM so that you can receive those automated notifications. At the very least, it doesn't have to send out Oscar worthy content for your folks. At the very least, what it does is it provides you the opportunity to have small updates, incremental reminders that it's been two weeks since you've talked to Jimmy, John, Joseph, whomever. And an opportunity to pr utilize what we do have in terms of pre-filled content, the, the holiday emails, the once a month, the market updates, whatever it is that you want to provide to that person. But it also reminds you that it's time to get in touch with someone. So really what I'm thinking about just to start with, because this, this grew out of a very long conversation that we had with the number 25 to the number 50 agent in the company yesterday was, you're really even still at the upper echelon it's all about monitoring what it is that we're using to help ourselves be in more places at the same time than we can be physically i want you guys to enjoy your lives spend the quality time that you want with the people that you love but not run yourself ragged in the process so what it looks like is that CRM, you need to live in that CRM. 
I don't care if it's an Excel spreadsheet. I don't care if you want to go over and say, I want to use Salesforce or I want to use, uh, or I want to use Boomtown or I want to use Follow Up Boss or something else that you want to just go pay for. But that return on investment needs to be, it, it needs to be in, in the form of, I'm actually going to use that CRM. But quite frankly, the lowest common denominator here is there's a CRM that is very adequate that the company already provides and to go and use that to the fullest of your capability. The next bit is obviously your email planning. It really is just a plan for follow-up and contacts, right? That's just setting up an action plan within joiner base and sticking to it with every single person that you have in that database. Focusing on where your lead generation is coming from and actually being intentional, whether it's one hour a day, two hour days, whatever it is, utilizing having a plan in place for that. I'm going to spend X amount of time looking through folks on LinkedIn or Facebook, or I'm going to be farming in my geographic area. And I'm not going to stop until I'm the person that knows every single scuttlebutt up and down the street in wherever my neighborhood is. If I'm not the boss of my own backyard, I'm not the boss of anything. I'm working on conversion again, what we're talking about is to access my calendar. If you need to work with that, let's do that. I am more than happy to spend time about real estate conversion conversations, the invitation to have a face-to-face -face meeting or the invitation to, like I talked about earlier this week and last week and the week before and the week before that, you might notice a trend just an invitation to the person that says, how's the market? And understanding that that question is actually, what's my home worth? And then offering to connect on a one-to-one -one basis and saying, listen, I'm scheduling these 10 to 15 minute Zoom calls or video conferences in which I'm trying to help folks understand how the value of their home may have changed during this time. Transaction coordination, communicate all over the place. Make sure that anything that's happening right now, you communicate with both Jennifer and myself and with all other parties involved to make sure that we keep the needle moving forward and that there are no surprises. And last but not least, it's that organization and follow-up. Seriously, I'd look into Trello if you want to, but I, I would... I would definitely advise that put it all on that Google calendar. It is right there. It will show up on your phone. You, I get it that I, I like, listen, I love a hand bound. I love a hand bound planner just as much as anybody. Here's mine because my other one runs out in, in, at the end of June, I will be filling out another one, but I still, if it's not in that calendar on my phone with the notifications, this thing's not giving me notifications. This thing's helping reinforce because I'm a tactile learner, but it's not giving me notifications the same way this does. And follow up, that's all about having a plan. So uh, I just wanted to share that with you guys because really the gap between uh, where we are and where we could be or where we wanna be is oftentimes making ourselves available in more places at once, but by leverage. Leverage helps everybody. If you use it correctly, it can help you expand your business exponentially. And I hope that those pieces, those systems that you can utilize, which it starts with getting in that CRM and pitching a tent in there, seriously, living in there. It might seem hard at first, but as soon as you get into it and start utilizing, and again, schedule time with me if you want to, and we will work through it on a one-to-one -one basis. We'll get in there, put, in, put, in, put a contact in, walk through the steps of the action plan, walk through how to compartmentalize data. If anything that you want to, to up your capacity to utilize that system both at home, in the office, on the go, to put it to your advantage, that's what we're gonna do. Now to flip it, uh, 
the market. So how is the market? So we're now sitting at June 19th, and as it stands, thus far, cumulative for the year, in terms of the entire GGAR market, you're looking at roughly 5,407 transactions that have already closed, that's solds, which only constitutes a 0.8% drop in the market based on this exact time last year. So what that means is 0.8% lower in terms of sold volume. As, ter as it stands right now, actives, current actives, just a little bit over 4,600, 4,649 actives currently on the market, that's down 7.4% from this time last year. But then again, we all know that this would technically have already included the spring bump, which we do know is coming soon. One of the things that's interesting is that, again, you've got an average sales price in the market up 5.7% from this time last year at $263,096. That's your average sales price. Days on market is static at 60 on average. The interesting thing is that of those 46, 49 active listings, that includes almost 1,750 contingency contracts. What that means is, is that the, uh, the, the, the current inventory, while it has risen slightly, the current inventory really needs to pick up to satisfy what is a very, very, very prevalent buyer demand surge that's apparent in the marketplace. So from May, month to month, so from May from April, in terms of closed sides, we're down 17.4%. Price has gone up 3.2% from April to May. So what it looks like in May of this past year, I said already thus far this year, your average sales price is 263.96. In May, it was actually 269.965. So what we're looking at is price appreciation at almost, based on the first six months of the year, you're looking at somewhere between two and a half percent and three percent per month. That's healthy appreciation up 5.7% from last year, that is, uh, that's, that's growth, but it's also relative to Greenville's economic growth of which what we're talking about, like the, the hospitality industry has been greatly affected. The service industry has been greatly affected. One of the things about Greenville's economic market writ large and how the employment breakdown goes Really, those jobs account for somewhere around 10 and a half to 11, sometimes 12%, depending on what kind of metrics you use. So that's how much of the workforce is devoted to those specific industries that are most greatly affected by this, by these temporary layoffs and furloughs and what have you. There are some other, there are some other that are affected in kind of a permanent way, but it's, it's, a, it's a very small portion of Greenville's economy. Therefore, what, you, what, what you're seeing versus the national economic activity, which has slowed down greatly, yes, in sectors. However, still, thus far this year, that, that national economic activity index, which is something that NAR has data on that I'll furnish to everybody here, that national average is somewhere around 2.8. South Carolina is at 4.9% which means that South Carolina's economy overall is more robust than the national economy. Does that mean that it's going to always be that way? No, but at least right now, especially because you're seeing a flight to quality, you're also seeing a flight away from some of the major metropolitan areas. And what I mean by a flight to quality in terms of business owners, you're looking for favorable business conditions. You know that Tesla relocated from California to Texas due to more favorable economic conditions in Texas per 
what Elon Musk wanted to accomplish with Tesla. South Carolina's economic activity, long story short, roughly twice that of the national average, just a little bit south of twice that of the national average. And another good thing that we've got going for us is that new construction, new building permits, year over year from 2019, right now, currently as it sits on June 19th, we are up 3.8% in new permits from this time last year. It needs to be more, but that's just where we stand right now. What's the best thing that we can do for ourselves is armor ourselves with information because there are a lot of people that are very uncertain right now. There is a rise, some would say a catastrophic rise in coronavirus diagnoses, more hospitalizations. Yes, people are getting out there more and more, which that should then in fact lead to a pretty much one to one or two to one rise in confirmed cases. That's how viruses that are airborne work. However, what we can do is still provide the facts because no matter what, housing is still a vital need for folks that need to live someplace. Everyone needs to live somewhere. And so that's just really, this is the data that we have. I can't, I can't provide commentary on the world or any of our socioeconomic environment or our socio-political environment. But what I can say is that our economy is performing right now. I can't predict but what I can weigh in on is that our economy is performing at a rate slightly above the national average. Our permits are up, which means a more healthy inventory level. Part of the reason why some of the inventory that's on the market might be lingering is because the buyers now, while they may be previewing some homes and that showing data has increased dramatically, prices are still rising because there is a quite simple supply and demand equivalent here. But what's happening is the buyer is spending much, much, much more time on the internet prior, which means that they are much more familiar with said home before they actually go choose to see the house, which means that actually showings, while down a little tiny bit over the regular average, what they're doing is, is when they're coming into the house, the the average number of offers to showings is actually increasing because by the time they're already getting in the house, they've kind of made up their mind and the physical showing really helps bridge the gap and make that ultimate decision. Another thing interesting about South Carolina right now is your mortgage payment to income index. There's a lot of people that talk about it. I mean, well, everybody's talking about it. We're, we're still at historically low in interest rates, and now is a great time to buy. Now is a great time to sell. Well, let's talk about it in terms of what it means to the actual person. If there's a 3.5% interest rate or a 3.2 or a 2.899, what does that mean in terms of how many people can afford a home? in Greenville, South Carolina. Our mortgage payment to income index, so historic average is somewhere around 18%, which is 18.4%. In Greenville, that average is somewhere around 11.5%. In the last couple of months, this first quarter report this year, that average mortgage to income ratio is 10.6%. 10.6% compared to the national average of 16.1. So let's let that sink in. That's a double that's a that's a double edged sword of one low rates, but also two people are earning a little bit more here in Greenville's economy relative to the price of homes. While a lot of folks might think, "Oh my goodness, prices are just out of hand." Well, our economic growth is actually balancing that out and then some. You couple that with the fact that the expectation for this year is a 3.1%. This is a forecast, obviously. Couple that with the expectation that there, there's a 3.1% price expectation increase. So appreciation overall this year of 3.1%. 
that that positions Greenville very, very, very favorably to be a stable market. I'm not saying a going crazy, everybody's out of the woodwork and we're all going to just be rolling around like Scrooge McDuck here. Greenville's market is very, very, very well positioned to be a, a position of stability now and moving forward, despite the fact that market conditions continue to change by the minute. Long story short, right now is the time that, uh, that, that, that now more than ever really, and I know that that seems kind of cliche because I keep saying that all the time, but repeatedly you're seeing a, 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 a wish and a flight for quality. So it's time to improve the processes that we utilize. It's time to learn more, improve our market knowledge, improve our ability to convert, improve our client management, improve our follow-up, improve our systems, put everything in one place, make it manageable, make it scalable, make it repeatable to go to work for you. I'm not saying do I'm not saying do everything with CRM and the follow up and go to Trello and go set set your schedule and do all this other stuff, but I'm saying improve the systems that are going to help eradicate the holes that are in your business and help you go serve the clients that you want to go serve on a daily basis. Now, whether that's information, whether that's tools digitally, whether that's physical tools like a day planner. If it's something as simple as that, if you go from no day planner to day planner, that's a win. Or if you go from day planner to shared Google calendar with the rest of the people that I'm doing business with, and I offer them that opportunity to connect to that calendar so I can regiment and organize my day, but also to show folks when I'm not available. So I don't run myself ragged. Or whether it's just an audit of your CRM, now's the time to up the quality so we can go out there and serve the communities that we serve. That's it, that's all I got. Thank you guys very, 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 very much. I will talk with you soon.